What are some not so fun facts? You're more likely to survive being shot in the head than rabies. Rabies was a big thing in the Philippines back in the 90s. We had a hospital dedicated for it and there were so many PSA on TV showing rabies victims tied to bed convulsing, screaming, and foaming in the mouth. It made me not trust dogs for a long time. When I got bitten by a dog, I cried and started saying my goodbyes to my loved ones. My mom was a nurse so she got me taken care of. That shit is scary. Damn, I live here and I didn't know that. But yeah, all the stories made me think twice about running from dogs though. I just walk at a brisk pace and get ready to punch them when they bite. You should see the footages they got from San Lazaro Hospital. Shit's scary. Roughly 40% of murders go unsolved. I love Tom Segura's bit about the first 48. Here's all I'm saying. I can't tell you where to go. I can tell you where not to go. Wherever they film the first 48 on A and D. Oh, if you're not familiar with the show, here's what it is. Camera crews follow real homicide detectives for the first 48 hours after a murder. And the reason that that time distinction is so important, is that after 48 hours, uh, they give up on that murder. They're like, that's some old shit. What do you want to do today? You're like, how about you keep trying to solve that murder, man? That shit happened on Monday. It's Wednesday. We're not gonna solve that shit, really? About 50 kids in the US are backed over by cars every week. My husband's 7-year-old cousin was backed over. He was playing around behind his dad as he was trying to back in a trailer. He slipped off the trailer and his dad ran him over. They were able to donate a lot of organs. Including eyes, skin, liver, kidneys, heart. The father and mother only made it one more year of that in their marriage. They are divorced now and major alcoholics. They had three older kids too. It was a horrid horrid thing. People joke about Australia having dangerous animals of all kinds. However, no. One enemy to Australians is the sun. Australia has the highest skin cancer rate in the world. An average Australian is four times likely to get skin cancer than any other type of cancer, and two-thirds of Australians will probably get it by the age of 70. Wasn't there a whole advertising campaign about this where the message was hey Aussies, don't worry wearing sunscreen doesn't make you gay. There was a whole slap. Slop. Slap. Campaign where you slip on a shirt, slap on sunscreen and slap on a hat, but taken out of context I can see how it could sound like gay sex. Don't forget to seek and slide seek shade, slide in sunnies. At any time, your body could make a mistake while fighting an infection slash virus and register a vital type of cell as unwanted for the rest of your life. Source, I never have enough platelets anymore. Welcome to the autoimmune family. We have several subs. Things I have learned since being diagnosed with autoimmune issue, these bitches travel in packs. You never have just one. Ah shit, WTF is gonna happen to me. I only have Crohn's. Orcas can skin penguins. They also skin seals and sea lions. The way they do it is by tail flicking them to the fucking moon, not really that far, but they do launch them like 150 feet up in the air sometimes, Erk. When they do this, the landing force will tear the skin off the animal. And why do they do this? Apparently, for fun. Edit, here's how they do it. I'm sorry, what? There's a wasp in Australia that hunts spiders. It doesn't eat them, though. It paralyzes them, makes a little mud cocoon for each one, and before sealing it off, lays a single egg on the now trapped spider. The egg hatches, the larva eats the still alive, and still paralyzed, spider, and then breaks out of the cocoon as a wasp. Edit, turns out they're all over the world, not just Australia. If you see a wasp dragging a spider, that's what's going on. I saw one of them once. I worked at a childcare and we saw one drag a huntsman across the playground and then up the fence. Fucker also then stung a teacher. Hoped to go there one day, but apparently, 
Fuck Australia. During the bubonic plague the Mongolians launched infected dead bodies over the walls of different civilizations. Bioweapons. Yep. History's first recorded use of it. The Black Death originally came from China and the Mongols spread it not only to Europe but also the Middle East, though the Middle East fared a lot better than Europe. Ironically though, the Black Death wiping put between one third and one th slash two of Europe forced the social changes that brought about the Renaissance in the Age of Enlightenment which brought about European domination of the globe for centuries. Shiro Ishii, director of Unit 731 who tortured, experimented on and murdered 600,000 innocent civilians was paid the equivalent of $3 million, adjusted for inflation, by the US government for his research papers and granted him complete immunity. The worst live among us and that's terrifying. Edit, loving the hundreds of notifications. Also I'm old and don't get half of these among us jokes I ha. They live where? Just read the entire Wikipedia article. It was like reading a horror story, except, this happened. Worst of all, it happened with no accountability. There really is no limit to human depravity. Isn't that the place that experimented with freezing people's limbs while they were alive and putting them in boxes until they explode from some gas, that was hidden as a sawmill or lumber factory during WWLL? <laughs>The TSA missed 96% of contraband during an inspection in 2015. I have a backpack that I use for camping but also take it on trips. I have to remember to remove all of the potentially suspicious items from the bag when I fly. But one time I forgot a huge fucking knife in there. They didn't even notice. This has happened to me a lot. I used to fly frequently and use my backpack daily. So many times I forgot I had shears or a box cutter in there and they only ever found them once. They found every half-empty water bottle I had, just not the potential weapons. They're hyper-focused on liquids it seems, and miss a ton of other stuff. Jacques Villeneuve, F1 World Champion 1997, is the only driver's champion in history not to have another driver die during their F1 career. It's a good job his music isn't an F1 driver and his own father died in a race. In the late 19th, and first half of the 20th century citation needed, doctors were taught that babies did not experience pain, and were treating their young patients accordingly. From needle sticks to tonsillectomies to heart operations were done with no anesthesia or analgesia, other than muscle relaxation for the surgery. So the crying and blood-curdling screams meant nothing? God this fact makes me want to melt my eyes. I've heard that anesthesia was very dangerous that times, it was higher chance to die from it that from illness or pain. And another fun fact on that note, nobody knows exactly how general anesthesia actually works. Pluto didn't even make a full orbit of the sun from its discovery to its demotion. I read demotion as demolition and for a second I actually believed we blew up Pluto. Oh no, we've decided Pluto isn't a planet anymore, Vale played it up which is a very mankind thing to do. <laughs> Diarrhea kills 2,195 children every day, more than AIDS, malaria, and measles combined. Till diarrhea can be deadly. Yay it drains you of your fluids often faster than they can be replaced in parts of the world. And in many places, the water is what's giving you diarrhea in the first place. Shit go in the water, water go in the cup, cup go to the thirsty, blood come out the butt. Some tumors grow teeth and hair. The leading cause of death in Burundi are diarrheal diseases. The underlying cause is lack of access to clean drinking water. In World War II Allied scientists stuffed dead rats with explosives to aid French resistance fighter who would leave them in factories to be thrown in furnaces and detonated. That's only really a not fun fact if you're a Nazi though. Or the rat. Or the explosives. Movies etc. Don't portray drowning people very accurately. This has led to a common misconception of what a drowning person actually looks like. Since a lot of people don't really know what to look for, a large number of tragic incidences of children drowning while swimming occurred with the child's parents right there. Close by. Near enough to save them. If only they had realized before it was too late. Edit, oh my. 
That's more upvotes than I've ever gotten before. Thank you all. My deepest sympathies to anyone reading this discussion who has lost someone to drowning. My little niece drowned 10 years ago. Positive vibes, too, to those of you who shared your stories of barely escaping the water. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I hope the experience produced some relatively good thing in your life, a deeper appreciation for the gift of life, if nothing else. Best wishes to all of you. What would be a more accurate depiction? I'm curious now. 95% of whale semen is dumped into the ocean during mating. From Moby's dig? Oh so that's why ocean water tastes so good. What are the oceans if not the world's biggest soup? Every cruise ship has a morgue. My brother-in-law works on a cruise ship that retired people live on full time, after they sell their houses and move in. About 700 passengers. It just keeps sailing around the world. They have four body compartments in their morgue, and at least one person dies every voyage. Snowpiercer 2